Hi guys, um, my name is Sabu Thomas. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Leader Healthcare. I wanted to watch the story of uh, how Leader Healthcare came into being, all about the aesthetics, uh, well being, and women's health. So, watch the space. Have a great day. Cheers. Well, uh, I started in the aesthetic field uh, in the year 2000. Uh, I was responsible for uh, launching one of the major laser companies in India, uh, namely Qterra. At that point of time, it was not even Qterra; it was it was something known as Altus Medical. And um, so, I was responsible for heading the entire team in launching the product in in India. So that led to me uh, traveling around uh, in in the region and meeting up with uh, plastic surgeons. At that point of time, it was only plastic surgeons who could afford lasers in, in that time. Uh, just because the sheer volume of uh, you know investment that one needed to do to buy that laser. So yeah, that's uh, basically what I started up with. And uh, after that, uh, life led me into, into Dubai. I was headhunted and uh, I was responsible for launching Again, taking the, the business of hematology in, in the region of uh, GCC. So that was in the year. It goes back to our relationships that we created over a period of time. And uh, I truly felt that this industry is something that uh, attached to my soul, basically, because you were dealing with happy people, people who were happy about themselves, happy customers. So it is all about being, you know, yourself, being myself in that whole process of, of uh, creating those relationships. And uh, in, in that process, I basically felt that I connected to my soul in this industry. So in addition to the customers, uh, it was very important that uh, you know, the trust between friends, uh, Mr. Sudeep Sazdev, our global CEO, uh, a dear friend of mine and uh, Greg, uh, Greg Leader, the angel investor at that point of time. So we all were really good comrades together and we said, okay, this is the time to end cash on these relationships, and cash on the friendships and uh, do something in industry that we, that no one else was playing that, that, that role uh, within the industry at that point of time. This is the reason why we said that Leader Healthcare uh, dermatology, aesthetics, well-being would be one of the major pillars of our businesses, other than other verticals. So we wanted to fit into that segment where you are taking care of the skin on a regular basis through different technologies, be it the hydrofacial, be it derma lugs, be it is clinical, be it uh, you know the skin pen, or all that segment of the market where which is basically an affordable treatment to the people at large. And the most important gap that I think that uh, Leader Healthcare fills up is uh, also in, in uh, ensuring that uh, our clients are trained on a regular basis. So it is not just that you push a piece of equipment and then do a treatment, do a training and then move out. No, at Leader Healthcare we truly believe that this training has to be a continuous process and make sure that the institutions are up and running with the technologies on a regular basis, on a quarterly basis, we do those trainings. Other than that, uh, so at the back end, we have the marketing department that works with the clientele and make sure that, okay, this news that about the technology is made available to the whole, whole world and people at large in, in, in the GCC. So that's, uh, I think that Vida Healthcare plays a complete intrinsic circle. We do the sales part of it, we do the training part of it, working with the marketing department, not just uh, the, the B2B but B2C and the social media and that's I think uh, something that we really excel in. So in that whole process, the client's uh, return investment on the technology, it, it's, it's excellent and they would want to again invest into other technologies uh, with Leader Healthcare. Uh, other than that, uh, other than uh, major technologies, you know, Leader Healthcare again went into, in, after a lot of introspection, we, we tied up with a company called Isknickel. And uh, Isknickel is uh, famous world over, especially in the US, it is number one brand. 
uh, associated with the, with the Hollywood, uh, something known as a fire and ice facial. So this is something again that we came up with and we wanted to take care of people's skin intrinsically again with a skincare brand. This is a premium product, uh, so it's not really uh, going into pharmacies and, and places like that. This field of aesthetics is uh, emerging uh, and growing rapidly and again reinventing itself. So when I say aesthetics, now that trend is also changing. It's, complete, it's getting into a complete cycle of well-being. So well-being of, it can be women's health uh, is one segment of well-being. Uh, you can play around with the well-being again with genomics or it can be also of the scalp, scalp health. Like, like we talked about skin health, something that's really emerging is scalp health. So in 2020, like our leader healthcare will be investing uh, and working a lot in our marketing as regards like you know, uh, scalp health through hydrofacial. And in hydrofacial, there is a product which is again being just launched uh, last month, uh, Keravib. Keravib is exclusively for the scalp, for the scalp health of, of, um, of people and to prevent hair fall, prevent dandruff and to ensure that your uh, hair is glowing and beautiful. In this industry, I believe uh, that uh, the one of the biggest obstacles is the, the product life cycle. It takes a lot for, for uh, companies to manufacture, uh, do the R&D and come up with a, with a phenomenal product. But the moment that product is out there in the market, you get the noise, you create the buzz and um, yeah, by that time the product life cycle is already down basically because there are a lot of other companies that come and build cheaper products around that and uh, that I think is the major challenge uh, obstacle that uh, companies face in the industry today. So um, something that has survived that whole whatever I said just now is uh, the hydrofacial because I personally have worked on the hydrofacial in the year 2000. So 2000 hydrofacial was there and uh, no one had heard about hydrofacial at that point of time. And uh, over the last 20 years this product has survived, it has grown and uh, it has become a lifestyle product simply because of marketing, of acceptability of the product and uh, immediate results that you see with the hydrofacial. Another obstacle that uh, I personally feel is that uh, in earlier days, you know, uh, one of the obstacles used to be that to have qualified professionals delivering these treatments. Now, there were regulations put in place to ensure that each and every technology is, uh, is operated or the treatment is done by a particular person who is qualified and this has been ensured over a period of time those things came in and uh, the, the quality of uh, the product, the quality of the treatment itself was enhanced because of having those regulations in place. Today with the millennials everything is all about social media. So a blogger comes and talks uh, you know something about a product and that's taken as the gospel truth so i think uh, in this industry uh, it is important that there needs to be some kind of a body who regulates uh, the social media uh, what the content that goes on the social media also is very important to, to regulate and uh, because uh, the millennials can easily fall into into that trap just because you know there is a buzz about a product by a certain influencer probably that influencer or blogger might not be uh, you know world renowned or would not be someone who's um, you know whose word is the gospel truth so but then the millennials fall to that trap and then they just go and you know, experience that treatment uh, without um, looking back and going into what exactly is that technology so i think that could be one of the of the obstacles to so lidaker is proud that we've been able to to bring uh, ground breaking you know technologies like hydrofacial which instantly is the Rylani spa product of the year from the year 2012 2011 until 2019 so uh, that we are proud that we've launched it in gcc 
Uh, other than that, uh, we have uh, the Dermalux, which uh, Dermalux incidentally is the 2018 UK Product of the Year Award. So that again is catering to the LED technology, which is uh, coming back. LED is not something new. It's been there in the industry for a long time, but it's making its comeback because people want non-invasive treatment, something that is, you know, a treatment that can be done on everyone that walks in instant gratification all kinds of skin types. We are proud that we've been able to identify such technologies. And then, like I said earlier, we uh, we brought for the first time in GCC, we brought the fire and ice uh, treatment, the original red carpet facial. Uh, today, everyone wants to have the red carpet facial, but the original red carpet facial from uh, is clinical. So, so if we look into all those segments, I think uh, Leader Healthcare has done a fantastic job and uh, in 2020, you would see something emerging which is uh, the skin pen. Uh, again, the skin pen uh, is, is uh, micro needling. Uh, it's been there for a long time, but today with all, uh, you know, it's important that when we are talking about skin health, the last thing that you want to do is cross contamination. So skin pen, the US product is the only technology that basically ensures that there is no cross contamination of, of fluids and that is FDA approved, C certified for that. So there is nothing else like in the, in the industry like that. So, so we take pride that we've been able to launch these products and uh, watch out for more from the healthcare.